morning and welcome to By the People. My name is Deborah Park. Buffalo is a city that has many jewels, but among those that shine the brightest is the Colored Musicians Club of Buffalo. The club, its musicians past and present, are what we'll focus on today, all brought together because of the American art form we call jazz. I'm joined by my friend Van Taylor, Taylor Hello. May Jazz. Good morning. How are you? And Melissa Kate, um, a, a renowned international vocalist. <laughs> And also, um, I'm a big fan of Carol McLaughlin, oh, the, 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 uh, the sax player and band leader, mm -hmm. um, originally from Jamaica, right? Yes, yes. And, um, and have enjoyed many evenings uh, watching you play. I'm so grateful that you got up early to be on By the People. You, mm -hmm. Your um, musicians are on a different time clock Absolutely. Than, the, yes. than the rest of the world, right? Sure. It's called 24 hours. Right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. My day hasn't ended yet. It started sometime yesterday, but it hasn't ended yet. <laughs> well, there's a a lot to talk about on today's show, yes, and uh, we have a treat for our um, our audience a little bit later. We won't tell them just yet, but um, you're here for a couple of reasons. The first is that um, the Colored Musicians Club is almost 100 years old, right? Pretty much. It started yeah. in 1917 and uh, was chartered in 1935. It actually is the longest running African American. A club of its type in the United States. We're celebrating our sixth annual jazz festival called the Queen City Jazz Festival, and of course named after the city, with our talent from the club to entertain people throughout Western New York or Buffalo, Canada. Come on down, have a great time. That's right. That's um, on July 31st. Right? July 30th. Mm -hmm. That's and we'll, right. Um, July 30th. Saturday. Okay, Saturday, July 30th. That's right. Um, so um, the Color Musicians Club, though, was something that was founded really because of segregation. It was a yeah. musician's union, That's right? That's right. And the thing about that was uh, you had two unions, uh, the Black Musicians Union and you had the, uh, the uh, AFM. And the thing is they merged together uh, when a certain bill was passed. And as a result, uh, a lot of the uh, war chest or the uh, financial parts of it were absorbed. So the club had to struggle on its own to maintain itself uh, throughout, the, throughout the 30s and so forth and on up. But since that time, uh, our predecessors have worked very hard to keep it going. Our current president, George Scott, has worked hard to initiate a museum uh, there, along with all the talent there, and the, the festival is part of that, to its ongoing history, uh, to push things forward. Now, the festival, is that free and open to the public? Is there a charge yes, it for is. it? It's free. It's open to the public. Uh, we have to thank our various sponsors throughout the area that have helped us. Uh, and it's, a, it's an ongoing process. It's getting bigger and bigger each and every year. Mm -hmm. Melissa Kate is one of our performers this year, as well as Carol McLaughlin, uh, Will Holton, Groovology, a young group coming up, doing a lot of great things. But we have two big bands. Carol's band is going to be on. The Larry Salter's big band is going to be on. And Herbie Small, as well as Walter Cliff. Yeah. That makes up our entertainment for this year. It's going to be an exciting time. Something for everyone. You know, when you think about the Color Musicians Club, you think about the best musicians in the world well, that's part of his played histories. at the Colored Musicians Club. Right. What, what a legacy to follow. Well, it, and it's living and breathing. I mean, it, it just keeps going. We have a lot of young kids who are coming up and learning from um, from my generation, from, from Carol's. Yeah. And uh, I mean, we have 16, 17-year-olds who are starting to initiate the careers at the club today. How, how did you get involved with it? Um, well, I was blessed. Van has been mentoring me for uh, a few years. and. Um, he introduced me to George, and so now I've been singing with the George Scott Big Band for quite a while. Um, Carol worked with me oh, for yes. quite a bit, too, so I was introduced to, to his <laughs> band. So I've just been in and out of the club for the last six years. And Carol came from Jamaica yes. to Buffalo, New York. Most people don't go from, from the hot to the cold. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I wanted to see what snow looked like. <laughs> you liked it, and you stayed, right? Well, yes. <laughs> I figure I couldn't take it back with me, and I like it, so I stay with it. And, and this is your career. You've made your career, uh, uh, you yes. know, home base is Buffalo, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Truly a living legend. That's he, what I was He is a living legend. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, people really should, look, uh, you know, go to the Jazz Fest and, and hear his band and, um, and hear Melissa. And, um, well, you know, the thing that I, I point out to a lot of people, people always ask me, when you say the Colored Musician Club, they'll go, well, what kind of people come? Well, I said, well, I choose to say I use the word for what I believe it to be, all colors, like a rainbow. So you will see black, white, Hispanic, Puerto Rican, red, mm. yellow, everybody <laughs> comes. So I take a rainbow approach. 
to the word color. Right. So, I, yeah. I mean, we're really going to appreciate what is a unique um, art form well, sure for America, is. jazz. Jazz, yes it is. And it's the, when it comes to exportation, of course my group Taylor Bay Jazz plays overseas, it's appreciated overseas. So uh, as time goes on, I'm going to reintroduce the club to the world. Excellent. Now, one of the things that's really exciting for the club right now, it's a historic landmark. Yeah, that's right. right. Yes. That's fabulous. But also, it's about to embark on creating a museum, which is so important in keeping this history alive. Mm -hmm. Because I don't think people appreciate um, the people who have passed through this museum. What? So, uh, through the uh, club. Well, so. Absolutely, absolutely. As you look at the diagrams, courtesy of Hatley and Company, uh, it's going to be interactive uh, type of a setup with computers. You'll be able to go in, listen to music, as well as interact with playing with different keys and instruments there in the museum park. You'll be able to see videos of some of the groups from back in the day, listen to some of their music as well. Oh, we can see in this drawing that's it, right. that there's um, some of the jazz greats are up around in that You'll be able to see trunk. the history, mm -hmm. hear the history, as not only that, but our, even our current legends, uh, such as the Carols or, um, <laughs> you know, Al Tenney and so forth will also be part of this as well, and uh, the next generation coming up. So it's designed to entertain the young folks of the day, educate them, as well as anybody else who's a visitor to Buffalo who doesn't know our history. Let's drop some names, though, because, you know, we've talked about jazz greats, but let's talk about the people who have played the in the club. You can take this. Well, local people are, <coughs> excuse me, are out of town, it's because we have had Dizzy Gillespie wow. coming there, um, Charlie Parker, Freddie, Fred, no, not Freddie Hubbard, Clifford Brown, and Miles was there, right? Dad's Miles right. Davis? Yes. Pictures of him Miles there. was there, yes. And, um, Ella Fitzgerald. Mm -hmm. uh, this was the regular route from, say, if you've gone from West Coast to East Coast, you had to come through Buffalo back in that day because of how the trains ran, how the ships passed through the Erie Canal. So this was part of it. You went from here, and then uh, we got our entertainment here, and then you went up to Niagara Falls for those that went up to the falls either into Toronto and onward to Syracuse and then into New York City, and vice versa, coming back. So you came through Buffalo. The club at the local, you stopped in, you signed in. So we have, as we have part of our document, a book for all wow. the signatures which verifies all the acts, all the famous people who have ever been there, we've got it documented. Wow, that's unbelievable. Yeah. And people will be able to see that when the museum that's is completed. Right. That's right. I, I'm, I'm assuming that the museum is also looking for historic artifacts that yeah, would be a part of these exhibits, has right? Something, no. um, maybe in your yeah. closet or attic from your grandfather, great grandfather, or mother that can help us. Please contact George Scott at the Colored Musician Club. He's worked so hard at bringing all this together and making it happen. It's such, it's like playing, for Buffalonians, it's like playing at the Apollo <laughs> in New York. It really yeah. is. What is What is the kind of magic? Like, tell me about the first time you, you all played. What was, the first time you played there, what was well, your, what was in your head? Well, when I first arrived on the scene, um, it's a brief story. I, I came up to this bar and I wanted to learn jazz standards and there was this gentleman sitting at the bar and I said, How old I mean, are you at this point? Oh, goodness gracious, I'm not going to okay. tell. <laughs> but I, I was young. Mm -hmm. And uh, he encouraged me, actually, to play original music. His name was Al Tenney. He's passed on. The but piano player. The piano, the fabulous you know, Al Tenney. That's right. And uh, he encouraged me to play original music. But I said, I came up to learn jazz standards. He goes, that's great. Let me see what you got. And so uh, my first experience was with Al Tenney. And he set me on the course that I am today, and uh, writing songs and so forth. But at the same time, uh, I watched him play all these these famous tunes. And uh, matter of fact, I videotaped him with this gentleman here. <laughs> and I should have brought a copy of that uh, yeah. and some of his original music. And yes. uh, but that was actually my first experience, different than a lot of people. So he encouraged me to write my own jazz. And Melissa, what was your first experience? Um, gosh, you know, I don't actually remember the first time I was up there. Um, but working with the, the George Scott Big Band is, is, is where I've been focused and uh, performing for the, the Easter Ball. Every year we have an Easter Ball and everybody comes and, and we have a couple groups play. And uh, it was incredible just to look out and see so many, I mean, the club was packed and just to see so many people who really love to come and, and really just sit down and enjoy music. Um, that's my experience with the club. I 
I, I love seeing all the different visitors that we get. We rehearse every Monday night, and, and people come up um, from all over, from Toronto, from California, and uh, they say, you know, we read about the club. We wanted to check it out. And yeah. so I just love being there and, and meeting the folks who come through. And Carol, you came from Jamaica and yes, settled well, here. Well, I, I came up for a visit before I actually moved into live. I went to the Anchor Bar and met George Holt. Now, that's right. father to the politician. And um, I had my horn and I sat in with them, and he suggested that, uh, you know, when you come back, give me a call and take you up to the club and introduce you to the fellas. I said, okay. So I came back, and he took me up to the club and introduced me to Elvin Shepard, CQ Price, mm. and all these guys. And, um, there's a fellow, you know, most of them are gone. And Graf Young, uh, CQ Price needed a barry sax player for a gig. I didn't have a barry sax, but you know, you saxophones are all the same ones, you have a mouthpiece to fit. And so he loaned me his barry sax, and I did a gig with CQ Price, a couple of gigs with him. Then afterwards, Edwin Shepard needed a second tenor in his band. So <laughs> I got to this band and played a few gigs with them. And of course, we had a guy named um, Lou Hackney, who was an excellent oh. bass player and saxophone player. He actually played a couple of gigs with Dizzy Gillespie, so you know, the caliber musician. But he had a certain penchant for testing musicians. <laughs> and since I was you know, from the island, he looked me up and I was playing the bass and said, oh, you're from the island? Oh, OK, and that's what you got. I said, well, you know. So they started a 12-bar blues, B-flat, and they started playing. All of a sudden, I heard B major, and playing. <laughs> I'm going right up the chromatic scale. <laughs> and some of the other guys understand and fell out, you know. <laughs> Trumpet players said, man, I don't play in that key. And when I got to <laughs> B-flat, and I hung in there, you know. And so I up to and say, hey. You're not bad. <laughs> yeah, you know, you're hanging there. So, Your mama made you practice, and right. you could you could hang in there, right? Well, you see, unbeknownst to him, you see, I was playing on the ship, and then I played tenor, alto, alto flute, soprano flute. So any night, any song, I could play all the, the keys with those different instruments. So transposing from key to key was no problem to me, but he didn't know that. So when he put me to the paces. <laughs> yeah, are you ready? I, 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 